is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We're testing out a little bit of a different background. I uh, just got that light. It's got a ton of different options. But if you guys click on the video, it's because we're going over pre-game questions. They actually did a video on this uh, a couple years ago, actually, when I first started the channel. The channel was too small for it to really get an impact or get out there. I think it only had 300 views. <laughs> so uh, I really wanted to redo it again because there was a lot of good content in this video going over specifically what you should be asking uh, in general before you start the game in 40K. So if you guys are new, then click, click on the channel. If you guys want to share this, you know, all over the web, that'd be great. I really appreciate it. We were so close to 10,000 subscribers. We had actually had a huge shout out from AllSpec Tact Tactics uh, the other day about our Grey Knights channel. Uh, so when we first started the channel, we were all about Grey Knights. Then we split off into more general terms to kind of get people better at 40K. And really, that's all thanks to my Patreons. You guys really wouldn't be doing this without you, my Dirtbag Nation. So appreciate you guys. So this video is going to be mainly focused on um, kind of like a, a bullet point on things you should be asking your opponent to kind of know what to focus on throughout the game and what to look out for. I hate gotchas in 40k. Uh, you want to be able to get the best game you can out of the game that you're playing. Even if you have to help your opponent or your, or your opponent helps you, there are some things you should be preparing for knowing that's going to happen throughout the game uh such as like if i can come in turn one if i can't come in turn one can you reserve closer to me within three inches can you not stuff like that uh but if you ask all this stuff ahead of time your opponent informed you before you start the game so it's not halfway through the game like oh by the way i can come in your backfield within three inches and then just nuke your entire army that's no fun it's not fun for you it's not fun for your opponent it just it's not a good way to play the game so we're going to go over uh, a lot of these tactics some of these going to be split off on the patreon.com so if you guys are patreons you get first access access to these videos and you get a bunch more content that you can't get on youtube uh so appreciate you guys so let's get into it we're gonna go down uh list turn by turn into this uh, i'm gonna make myself smaller so i'm not in your way and this big ass blue light is not in your way okay so most of these will be told while going over your armies okay so you're gonna be going over stratagems um what they can do what they can't do if you're in a gt scenario there's not a lot of time so knowing these questions asking them while you're going through the army is is key and trying to memorize them like on the back of your hand uh so 10th edition standard strats you should be knowing those as well so if people throw a grenade at you you don't get pissed because you didn't know about the grenade strat you should know about these strats before you get into the game so number one what secondaries does your army give up that's a really standard one if you guys see a ton of tanks on the other side you're probably going to assume that they give up bring it down uh if you go into i made this list again i think it was ninth edition so some of these could be portrayed more towards ninth but we're going to kind of fix it into a 10th edition uh game so first one what does your army secondaries give up when it comes to fixed or tactical most of the time if you build a list for fixed you kind of already know where your fixed uh, ones are going to be but if you're going into let's say tau for example and your tau opponent has 12 characters or all of the bring it down points that you possibly can take in a list that might be something you're going to be thinking about when you're doing uh your secondaries so what type of secondaries does your army give up does it give up assassinate uh bring it down um stuff like that so that is going to be the first question you're going to be asking your opponent uh how many assassinate points does your army give up how many bring it down points does your army give up this one is super important any pre-game moves or redeploy does your army have so scout is the new thing uh do you have any scout moves do you have any infiltrators infiltrators and scout are i actually have a whole video on that if you guys want to check that out but do you have any pre-game move because that's going to determine especially world eaters if you guys are going into world eaters and you never played world eaters yet that most of the army pre-games moves so they already threaten a shit ton so now that they're adding pre-game move onto that they're going to get in your face um relatively quickly so not deploying on the line and deploying a little bit further back is going to be key when you're asking your opponent what do you do turn one how you how you're going to deploy what type of secondaries you're going to be doing if i'm going to be doing cleanse and deploy teleport homers against a world eater's army you're probably going to lose because you're not really going to be in the middle most of the game and you're not going to be able to uh be on the objectives on turn one or super fast uh, against that type of army so any pregame move or scout moves or infiltrators do you have on your opponent so infiltrators if you guys are going uh if you have infiltrators they have infiltrators you're basically fighting over who can place the first infiltrators i learned this from mike because if you can block out 
your enemy from placing their units or their infiltrators, you're going to be in a way better advantage than your opponent. So if I have, you know, three Nurglings, you have two Nurglings, let's say you're playing Chaos versus Chaos. Um, I don't know why this thing won't fucking go away. Okay, so if, if if I have three Nurglings, you have three Nurglings, we're basically fighting over the middle of uh, deploying our infiltrators as soon as possible. So whoever wins the roll-off, you're like, I'm going first because I'm going to put my infiltrators down before you put your infiltrators down. So that way I can kind of block you out. And if I have a scout, like Seekers, for example, I want to be able to have them move up into a safe position. So if you have infiltrators and I have scout moves i can't scout within nine inches of your infiltrator so that's going to block me from being in my deployment zone that's not good especially if you're planning on turn one secondaries getting in the middle of the table or your opponent's deployment zone so that's super key on knowing if they have any pregame or scout move or infiltrators next thing is what the threat ranges are on turn one if you're going into the deployment um and you're about to set up like your your models or your tanks and you see a rhino on the other other side of the table what's that models or units uh threat range what's your max threat range that was a good way to ask uh, my max threat range is if i roll a six on the dice for advance i can charge 12 to 24 inches something like that <clears throat> most of the time you're going to use averages so you're like all right i want to give you a 10 inch charge if you make a 10 inch charge you, you deserve it and if you roll let's say a four on average so six plus four plus three from getting out of rhino uh, you're looking at 13 inches plus a 10 so you're looking at 23 inches away so if i'm 23 inches plus away turn one I'm good starting my opponent or starting there. Now, if you roll six for advance and you get a twelve for the for the for the charges, hey, you deserve it. I I didn't I didn't use my statistics to my advantage there. So that's something you should be knowing is what your threat range is in in charges specifically, but also shooting. How far can that tank shoot? If you move out eight inches, let's say a forge fiend. If you pregame move out eight inches or um, measure out eight inches just to kind of proxy turn one where you're going to deploy if you move out eight inches and then you get line of sight this way 36 inches away that's your max threat range so if i start my model 37 inches away plus your eight inches for the movement you can't get to me turn one that that's a great way to set up your your deployment now i have a whole deployment video on the channel as well if you guys want to go check that out but ask for threat ranges so what that way when you're deploying you know exactly you're not going to get shot or charged turn one, which is huge in this game. If you're not trading well, which that's another video, trading units well. If you're not trading well in this game, you're going to be losing most of your games. If you're trading well, if not equal to more points than your army is worth, you're going to be winning most of your games. Whether it comes to points, secondary points, or trading units points, that's how you're going to win more 40k games is <clears throat> trading units. And knowing threat ranges is one of the biggest things to do that. Uh, when it comes to turn one for missions or deployment uh what are the most gotcha tactics that's a great one to ask a lot of people have controversy with this one uh you don't really want to be giving all of your stuff but you also want to be giving specific stuff like gotchas and what i mean by gotcha is sigil for example great knights have sigil uh throughout the game it's completely up to you if you're going to tell your opponent about sigil uh maybe in a gt situation rtt is friendly games 100 i'm going to remind my opponent a thousand times hey that unit has sigil it might be a psychological standpoint where i'm going to tell them hey don't shoot them because i really don't want them to shoot them or hey don't shoot them because then i'll teleport behind your army and, and blow you up next turn but i'm not really going to do that you know so it's like do I want to tell them? Do I want to tell them? That's completely up to you. But Sigil is a good example of a gotcha. If you don't tell your opponent Sigil in the beginning of the game, yes, they didn't ask you about it, but it's kind of a dickhead move about not telling them about it. So I have Sigil on my Grandmaster. This guy, if you target him once per game, I get to teleport anywhere on the table um, and kind of just be out of line of sight. If I'm still in range and an eligible target, you can shoot me. If I can't, you can then shoot another unit. So there you go. I told them that's my gotcha. That's a great question to ask your opponent. Do you have any crazy stratagems that I should be knowing about or looking out for throughout the game? Then they should tell you, yes, I have this, this, and this. Look out for them. Now it's up to you to remember that throughout the game because that's really on you throughout you know 40k. Uh, you could always ask your opponent, hey, do you want to practice competitive or do you want to practice friendly um, or friendly competitive? I always ask Mike, do you want... Uh, Tournament Derek, or do you want Friendly Derek? So when he's playing Tournament Derek, I'm not going to tell him about Sigil just so he can get better at the game and remembering specific stratagems or uh, enhancements like that. But most of the time, we're going to be playing Friendly Competitive where I'm like, hey, bro, 
he's got sigil if you shoot him i'm going to be able to go over here and then kill that unit next turn something like that so what are your most gotcha tactics now these are going to be used for gt scenarios grand tournaments because you're going to be knowing you're going to want to know what your opponent can do that's crazy to you that you might not have simple tactics like go to ground or, or grenades they everybody has those everybody has access to them but sigil a great example is something that not everybody every army has and you're not going to be able to see it in every single scenario so next your most used strats this kind of goes hand in hand with the last one of what are your most gotcha tactics what are your most used strats this is another thing that people comment on by telling them oh i'm not going to tell them all my strategies well i mean if you if the opponent asks you should freaking tell them <laughs> like what are your most used strats well for me i love grenade strats i love um come down within three inches i love a mist of deimos of course you're going to tell them about mist of deimos uh what's another crazy grenade? i mean i have another one which is crazy but i don't ever use it so i'm not going to tell them a stratagem that i don't ever use but i have a dev wound stratagem on a six uh to melee or shooting it might just be melee it freaking sucks i don't really use it but i have it but my most used strats are one two and three all right, so that's a good thing. So that way you don't have to go through all the stratagems that your opponent has. You could just go through the most common or the most used for their specific army. If it's a Tal, you're like, oh, I fire and fade almost every single time. If it's Phantasm, if it's something like that, you're going to start realizing that these stratagems are played by these armies and you're going to see them a lot more because you know what to look out for. You asked the same questions over and over every single game. So that you, what are your most used strats? And that's going to be something easier to remember than here's my strat card, try and memorize all these six strats and the core strats and your army strats and everything else throughout the game. What's your most used strats, bro? Oh, I use this, this, and this. All right, cool, that's awesome. I use this, this, and this. Great, that, that's a friendly environment right there. So that was one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got three more. So let's go over uh, the next one. Do you guys have any snipers wound phase caps uh minus one damage you can start talking about minus one to wound any crazy thing like satans uh, the eldar guy oh, fuck what's his name um karn khan the dude you, you guys know the the, the melted dude uh do you have any minus one damage stratagems do you have any minus one damage built in uh do you have any snipers that can snipe me out uh do you have any precision there it is so do you have any precision minus one damage uh minus one ap any of those stratagems so that way if i know i'm going into you i know you're you're, you're gonna be super tanky to kill i played a really good tournament player the last gt and i didn't know that his termies had four wounds which I'm just so used to Termies having three wounds, but these Termies had four wounds and they had a five up field of pain built in. I lined up literally all my Dread Knights to shoot this unit and I killed one of them. <laughs> and then he rolled six to do the Devout Bush and got six inches closer to me, which then I lost a uh, Dread Knight next, la the following turn. But knowing what type of wound minuses, negatives, uh, does your opponent have? Uh, Deathwing Knights, stuff like that. Satans monoliths i don't think they have anything anything that has minus one damage is huge enough or half damage that's really huge in this game any snipers do you have any people that can shoot precision whether it be spells guns or in melee uh precision is really good in melee uh and precision is really good in shooting so do i have to keep my characters safe while shooting phases or do i have to keep my characters safe in melee phases that's something that you want to know before you start the game so that way you know which one to look out for if i have Cryptek snipers coming down and just precisioning out my characters turn one or two that's not going to be fun that's not going to be a good game and you should probably should have known that ahead of time by asking this specific question all right next question you want to be asking any way to increase charges so do i have plus one to charge do i have plus three to charge do you have uh, a miracle dice that you can use uh do you have fate dice anything that you can uh use for your opponent or your opponent can use in, in an advantage that's something huge to know so that way you can plan either turn one coming down turn two or rapid ingress uh in most games you're going to see a lot of rapid ingress targets can they get a, a plus three to charge like drago coming in uh for me the teleport assault or 
preserves, or deep strike. So any way to increase charges. Uh, some armies, it might be world eaters as well, have plus one of their charge. So instead of uh, planning out for a nine inch charge, they're now planning out for an eight inch charge, which is a huge skew to the statistics when it comes in from reserves or deep strike. So you're gonna have to plan around that because let's say I leave some room in my backfield because like all right if he makes a nine inch charge whatever but if he makes an eight inch charge shit i can't give him my backfield because he's probably going to make that charge especially with a reroll or a free reroll built in to make that eight inch charge so is there any way to increase your threat ranges uh can you advance in charge can you do any of this stuff uh turn one coming out of a rhino can you like if you have anybody in a rhino can you advance in charge? Uh, if you have Slanesh, can you advance in charge for one stratagem or one CP? All that stuff is really good to know uh, in the charge phase. So that I got I got boned by a lot. So I'm sure a lot of people have wanted to ask this question before finding out that they should have asked this question. Which leads us into the next thing you guys already heard me say. Can you advance in charge with anybody? Um, this one is so good to know during the game. It might not be exactly you're gonna remember before the game, but it's good to ask like, hey, do you have anybody that can advance in charge? Especially scout, like a scout or infiltrator, because that means they're gonna be able to scout or infiltrate and then advance in charge turn one and it's just gonna be in your face turn one. So that's super good to know before the game, so pre-game question, but can anybody in your army advance in charge, get plus one to charge, half charges, use miracle dice, whatever it may be, those questions are going to be good to ask. And when you start memorizing the armies and knowing your armies, what they do, your opponent's armies, you're going to start to remember that. So it might not be one of the questions you're going to need to ask pregame because you've already seen that unit a thousand times. But can you advance in charge? That's going to be kind of huge. All right, so that's going to be my quick pregame question tactical video guys if you guys want more videos like this definitely leave a comment subscribe do all the fun stuff on youtube but head over to patreon so you guys can support the channel a lot more tactical videos are coming up on the channel especially in 2024 we're so close to 10,000 subscribers and it all starts with you guys hitting that subscribe button so we can get to that that point we're doing a thousand dollar uh giveaway um in models for our patreons coming up we're about 93 dollars away from reaching that goal so once we get that goal, we're going to be doing a huge giveaway like we did last time when we hit $500 a month. So we're so close to 1000 Again, wouldn't be doing this without you guys. But if you guys want to see the rest of this video, head over to Patreon. It's a dollar a month. Or if you guys want to support the channel a little more, $5 if you want to get in the competitive scene. $10, that way you get a coach in your corner. Ask questions, list ideas, tactics, anything you guys need to do. That's competitive dirtbag. Great masters, you get a little bit more. You guys get special, special perks when it comes to videos. Um, TTS games, tactical videos, uh, battle reports, and specific dice that you guys get anytime you purchase or see me at a grand tournament, you guys get some some special swag for a grandmaster. So head over to there, watch the rest of this video, and if you guys are Patreons, appreciate you, and we'll see you in another video soon. What's up, gents? 40K Dirtbags here. If you guys are thinking about joining the Patreon page, we're going to go over each tier and how it's going to benefit you and what you're looking for specifically to get out of 40K in 10th edition coming up. There's a lot of stuff to go over. There's a lot of tactical videos up on the channel, which is for free. There's going to be a bunch of perks that you get specifically for being a part of the Dirtbag Nation Patreon page. Uh, so first off, we have the first tier, which is a dollar a month. You guys get first access to the videos over at patreon.com. You also get access to the Discord, which is specifically uh, a private link in the Discord that only Patreon members can see. So you guys will have first access to that. Also a benefit is Patreons uh, over the Dirtbag Nation get live streamed games on patreon.com streamed from YouTube, but there's only links specifically for the patreons.com. So not only do you get first access to these videos, you also get to see live stream games specifically only on patreon.com. The next tier is the Justicar. You guys get a shout out on every single video uh, on YouTube. You also get to support us a little bit more. You get first dibs uh, at voting on Discord, as well as you just kind of say, hey, I just want to be a uh, Justicar dirtbag and support you guys a little bit more than that dollar a month here. Uh, but you have get all the same access uh, as well as the um, different color over on the, uh, the Discord. So the third tier is the competitive dirtbag. Uh, this tier, you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is a lot of the dirtbags over on the Dirtbag Nation. They are able to send out messages one-on-one, -on -one, go over list ideas, tactics, anything you guys want to talk about. When I was getting into 40K or really any game in general, I always wanted to message the top players in the meta and just ask them questions. 
this $10 a month here gets you that opportunity to message us one-on-one -on, -one on Discord, so that way we can actually coach you, give you our insights, suggestions, and that's gonna get you better at the 40K uh, 10th edition as a whole. So that tier alone, just $10 a month to have one-on-one -on -one coaching, one-on-one -on -one messages anytime throughout the month, that's gonna be a perfect tier for you guys. Even if you're brand new to the game, we go over a thousand point list, 1500 point list, 2000 point brand new starting list, team list, anything you guys need, that's what the competitive dirtbag tier is for. Uh, also, you get a little bit of uh, red number uh, name tag on uh, Discord so people know that you're really serious about getting into the competitive scene. The Grand Master Dirtbags. This is the all in all $25 a month tier. You get one on one coaching, everything we said uh, prior to this, but you guys get to see me, Mike, any of the other dirt bags play your specific list that you want to see tested out live on one of our battle reports. You guys get to mention, suggest videos you guys want to see coming up on Patreon.com. So you guys get the above first tier benefit of everything that we do over at Dirt Bag Nation. All the support mainly comes from you guys supporting us over here at Dirt Bag Nation. And Grandmasters, I can't thank you enough, but for $25 a month, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching and anything you want to see live on the tabletop. So you get, get to see a professional play uh, right in front of you. You guys get to kind of like see it one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm actually making this specifically for you. There's also TTS events that you guys can uh, suggest. If you guys want to do a first one or two turn run through on TTS, we can actually log in and coach you one-on-one -on -one with that. If you guys see us at any GTs, uh, you guys get sp uh, special benefits, free dice, stuff like that. Anytime you purchase a merch thing on Discord, you guys get a free uh, limited edition dirtbag dice sent to you with every single purchase on top of that. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits coming up with the Grandmaster Dirtbag. But guys, I can't thank you enough for supporting us. Definitely let me know which tier would be best for you if you go over to patreon.com and specifically go to a tier. And make sure you don't forget to message me up on Discord. That's where we check every single day. If you guys are really into getting into 10th edition 40k, head over to the Patreon, join the competitive dirtbag or the Grandmaster, message me as many times as you possibly want, uh, and I'll coach you the best I possibly can uh, on any specific army that you guys play. Mainly our armies right now, currently, uh, going into 2024 is gonna be Chaos Space Marines, uh, Grey Knights, Death Guard, uh, and then we have uh, Custodies, Sisters, and I think that's it going into the wings of 2024. But again, any other army that you guys play, we have other coaches lined up for the dirtbags that are ready to take on that role of the competitive dirtbag page. So guys, really appreciate it. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for joining the Dirtbag Nation if you guys are already part of us, and we'll see you in another video soon.